Thank you, Jonathan. Well, I think the energy level is growing. I think all of you get the feel now why Wisconsin Without Borders has such great partners. Each one of us brings something unique to this partnership, something that's necessary to launch this whole initiative. It's my pleasure now to introduce Lori Dupree Brown to give us some more background on the thinking behind the Wisconsin Without Borders idea, the fact that it uh, was begun with Peter Bosher, the history, the vision at that time, and to talk to us a little bit more about how it has grown and evolved over the time uh, since it was first proposed. Laura Dupree Brown is the Associate Director for Education and Engagement for the Global Health Institute, where she's involved in developing and sustaining campus-wide campus global health programs. She's played leadership roles in healthcare quality improvement programs in Chile, Ecuador, and currently Ethiopia, and has contributed as a trainer and advisor to strengthening health systems in 13 different countries. She is the co-chair of the WWB Advisory Board, uh, and please welcome Laura Dupree Brown. I'm, I'm speaking to you today as a representative of the recently formed uh, Wisconsin Without Borders Advisory Committee, which I co-chair with Beth Tryon of uh, the Mortgage Center. And I'm delighted to be able um, to be here to thank and honor the mortgages for their support of community engagement at UW. It was also wonderful to meet Sarah and Bob Rothschild yesterday and to be, to be inspired by their work in Botswana that will be presented later today at the keynote. Before we hear about some of the programs featured in the poster session, uh, we'll be hearing about Ecuador, Uganda, Germany, and right here in Madison, global work can occur. Um, I'm gonna try to answer a few questions that you may have about Wisconsin Without Borders. Simply, what is it? Where did it come from? And where is it going? So, um, here we have our mission statement. Uh, Wisconsin Without Borders is a campus initiative that offers really a framework and principles of engagement for global service learning. And as you see here, the mission uh, focuses on interdisciplinary collaboration, reciprocal community partnership is key, academic preparation, uh, reflection, and action to foster sustained human flourishing in our world. And I'm gonna just say a little bit about the principles. As Jonathan mentioned, we want students to cross disciplinary, and faculty, to cross disciplinary and geographic borders, and that is developing cross-disciplinary fluency, as well as cross-training where they actually learn skills from students in other disciplines. Um, in terms of academic preparation, mentoring, and safety, this is extremely important. Uh, in terms of the academic preparation, we, we want to prepare ourselves so that we go out with a really clear lens to perceive what's going on and be able to respond in the communities where we work. So the academic preparation helps with that. Also, mentoring is very important, not only for people who need mentoring, but especially for our student leaders who are just so talented and amazing, and maybe they could do wonderful things without a mentor. They really deserve a mentor to fully realize their uh, leadership capability. So I think one thing about this program is that students really have um, that support of a mentor. The other thing is safety, and I don't just mean student safety. I also mean safety for communities. Um, just because you did global work doesn't mean you did good. Um, some of you may know that our students could go to villages where they might be allowed to perform surgery if they asked. Um, that is unfortunate and it's a function of our privilege um, and we can't really deny that. We have to bear it responsibly and use it for good. And so some of those principles about preparing students to be good global citizens and respectful of community, it's complicated and to prepare ourselves. I mean, I'm not, I I'm, I'm think we're all, all of us who do this, it's an it's a ongoing journey. Um, the other thing is fully en engaged mutual partnership. I know in my institute we talk about respectful partnership, which I'm proud to talk about, but the Mortgage Center really takes it up a notch. Respectful partnership is sort of like pah, bottom of the barrel behavior. You want to really have it be full-fledged mutual partnership where you're jointly setting the agenda, collecting data, being empowered by owning and using the information. So I think that's something that I hope um, would just infect campus, that kind of uh, partnership. Um, besides the process of partnerships, there are outcomes that we want. We want measurable, improved health and well-being outcomes, and that's where some of the rigor of a program like this comes in. And also the outcomes for faculty and students in terms of the personal and professional growth. I think that it, it, we all have the humbling realization when we do this work that to change the world, we really have to change ourselves in ways that um, we maybe didn't see. Uh, and that happens probably every time you get on a plane or get off one or get back on one. So um, that, that's a, a good journey to be on. Um, and sometimes students give you a clarity of vision you know, that you don't have when you have your own history. So it's a great partnership. 
The other thing is um, understanding challenges to human flourishing in a global context. And here's where we get to talk about the difference between international and global. We're not really um, trying to create a program where people are focused on um, very distant problems without understanding that there are local problems, but rather that wherever you are, um, thinking about uh, global root causes, global impacts is part of the equation. So our work is globally contextualized, whether we're in Madison or whether we're um, in Africa. And in fact, you can go to Africa without global context too, and that's not global then, that's just maybe an international visit that you did. So uh, we, we're taking this idea of global in a little bit of a different way to include Wisconsin. Um, in terms of, um, so you might be saying now, isn't this just the Wisconsin idea? Um, and I would say, well, there's, first of all, there's no such thing as just the Wisconsin idea. Um, but there are deep affinities here. Um, and this is very, very much resonates um, with the Wisconsin idea. This is an effort to clearly articulate the global dimension of the Wisconsin idea. Um, and the power of interdisciplinarity, and also the nature of two, true partnerships. So I think there are some things um, that can be said. Here are some phrases people had have used. You know, It's inspired by the Wisconsin idea. I'm not going to read them all, but it's the Wisconsin idea gone viral. That was uh, Jeanette Roberts. Um, it's it's, um, it's uh, a contemporary incarnation of the Wisconsin idea. Whether, whether Wisconsin Outborders is viewed as new uh, or an affirmation of our proud history or both, it's our hope that Wisconsin Without Borders will lead to positive impacts for communities, personal transformation for students, um, and that it will help us all to be more creative and resourceful thinkers so that we can serve Wisconsin better, um, be good global citizens, and also position Wisconsin as a global leader. Nobody is living just in Wisconsin anymore. We're all interacting in this global environment, so uh, we want to prepare students for that. Where did Wisconsin Without Borders come from? That's the second question. Um, as many of you, as was mentioned, it was Professor Peter Bosher of the School of Engineering who first coined the term, oops, I don't want to give away my, who first coined the term Wisconsin Without Borders um, and presented the idea at the Mortgage Center 10th anniversary. But as someone who, ha I was someone who had the privilege of doing field work with Peter, that fact um, understates the case considerably in terms of his contribution. He really offered a lot more than a great byline. Um, he gave us leadership and a life example of service learning. He was deeply committed to justice for people at the bottom of the economic pyramid and to intergenerational justice and sustainability. He saw those as linked. Unfortunately, he died of cancer just six months after he inspired us at the 10th anniversary, but that didn't stop him from being a person of action. He spent part of his last days working with and through his students to ensure that his work in Rwanda and Ecuador would continue. And in fact, some of his students who worked with him are here, Jonathan Blanchard, who did some of the work in Ecuador, and Tim Miller are both here. Uh, from Tim Miller did some work in Rwanda. There may be others, too, who are engaged in Rwanda. So the Wisconsin Without Borders seed that Peter planted was watered faithfully by Mary Rouse, as was mentioned, and uh, also Marsha Bosher, who's here today, a cherished friend as well as honored here today. Is she here? Raise your hand. Thank you. Um, she's been, Marsha has been a friend and supporter of Wisconsin Without Borders from the beginning. She is an inspiring servant leader in her own right, acting locally in her faith community and through her work, opening her home to many, and staying engaged with Pete's work in Rwanda through students and her own recent visit there last summer. Um, so um, I want to also, I, I acknowledge the review committee, which Jill mentioned, uh, which was so helpful to us. We had a good idea in Wisconsin Without Borders. Um, Gilles helped us move forward by convening an outstanding committee, and as a result of that process, we had a solid framework that ref reflected perspectives of many schools, institutional history, and um, Wisconsin Without Borders principles really began to impact our field work at that time. So even though organizationally things weren't happening, we were, we were working with this framework in, in a number of countries. Meanwhile, campus champions kept coming. Nancy Matthews, as a newly uh, appointed director of the Mortgage Center, embraced Wisconsin Without Borders. Her clear vision of how things fit together, both institutionally and intellectually, were just what we needed. We also had support from the co-chair of the campus-wide global health effort, Dean Jean Jeanette Roberts, who not only provided words of support, but rolled up her sleeves with us at our first working meeting about a year ago. Um, so. Um, 
Acknowledging so many beginnings, all of these beginnings and leaders, it's also important to note that Wisconsin Without Borders is really an emergent phenomenon. We always hope that something will emerge, but then when it emerges, we don't always describe it that way. Um, and that there are a number of people at U in UW-Madison community who've been working um, in this way for many years. So we've brought many of these people together in this advisory board so that their collective wisdom and experience can inform this program. And if you take, take a minute to look at that list, you'll see some familiar names and you'll, you'll um, hear their, them, their students present and maybe some remarks from them as well. So um, really proud to be um, part of this gang. Um, so the, um, the, in addition to the advisory board, we're hoping to convene a joint learning community, which is sort of a methodology many of you may be familiar with, where we are coming together to share expertise because we're willing to mentor students, we're willing to learn together, and engage in long-term partnerships locally and globally. So we really do want these to be sustained long-term partnerships over time. Um, and, um, I think I'll, I'll go on to briefly our progress to date, some of these things we've mentioned. Um, we have 15 featured projects and counting, and you'll see great topical and geographic diversity. They are informed by Wisconsin Without Borders principles. They're grounded in established relationships. Most of these are not new things that, that just started up. Um, we also were able to leverage existing resources and programs, and I want to mention here, in particular, um, the Madison uh, Initiative for Undergraduate Global Health Certificate, which is directed by Sherry Tanumi Jardu, who's here, and John Farrick and myself are involved in leading that effort. We were able to leverage some of those resources, the um, internship program, um, IAP skills, and the mortgage match to really put this forward quickly. We wouldn't have been able to put it together otherwise. Um, so that's, and then where are we going? Um, we have a lot of things that we want to do listed there. I'm not going to go through each one, but you saw the beginning of the Wisconsin Without Borders marketplace outside where we're selling products from the different uh, microfinance, micro uh, microenterprise initiatives in the communities to feed back into development. We're looking at resource development, not just financial, but also skills and talent to um, en en enhance our capability. So just to close, I was in a me reading, uh, meeting recently with course leaders who'd done global work with students. And the engagement and energy was really palpable as they expressed again and again their respect and appreciation for UW students and what they can do. It made me so proud to be a part of UW-Madison. And I think you're going to feel the same when you hear from the students and their mentors. And so in closing, I just want to say happy 15th to the Mortgage Center community. It has really meant a lot to me to be able to turn to the Mortgage Center um, as a place to learn and teach through engagement. Thank you. Thank you.